What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel and welcome into my new workshop. So behind me is my new welding and fabrication table. Um, I picked it up off of Facebook Marketplace for a thousand bucks and put about six hours into surfacing the top. Um, it just had a lot of surface rust. I, I used just an orbital sander with uh, about 60 grit to take it all off. I'm really happy with the finished product, but the next step is drilling holes in it to make it a fixture table. I don't know exactly how much it weighs, but I do know that it took two skid loaders to pick it up. Um, even a high-low, a pretty good size high-low cannot lift it. So I estimate this table to be between seven and 8,000 pounds currently. Um, it is fully cast iron. It has a three inch thick top and then a two inch thick sides and it has um, four webs that go all the way through it that are about two inch thick and a foot deep. So it is a very serious table. Um, it's perfectly flat as far as I can measure and uh, I'm really looking forward to drilling some fixturing holes in it to make it even more usable. Um, so the main reason that I really want to get these fixture holes drilled is because as you can see we have like a foot deep skirt on either side of the table so where you normally put a clamp to hold material down or hold something while you're welding it is very difficult in this table. So if I can get some holes drilled in it, it'll make it a lot easier. All right, so I'm assuming you guys are like me and have not drilled large holes in three inch thick cast iron. Um, so a large part of this video is gonna be trial and error. I have a few different kinds of drill bits to try and a few different kinds of coolant and lubricant to try as well as two different styles of mag drills. So I really wanna see what works best and what will give me the best hole. The first step is choosing what size hole and what size grid pattern you wanna use. Um, the, the standard sizes in the welding industry are a 5 8 inch hole with a 2 inch grid pattern or a 23 millimeter hole with a 4 inch grid pattern. So as you can imagine that's a very big difference between the two. Um, the smaller has benefits for how much you can fixture off it. The holes are a lot closer so you can make small adjustments and have a lot more usability but they have a much smaller hole so the tools themselves are weaker and you can't get as much clamping force. Where on the larger side at 23 millimeters um, you're using a four inch grid pattern so you don't have as many holes to make such fine adjustments when you're fixturing stuff but your tools are much stronger because you have a lot more material there. Um, so more recently Fireball Tool has come out with a line of tools that work off of a three quarter inch hole um, and then you can, since it's only a small jump from the 5 eighths, you can maintain that two inch grid pattern. So that is what I chose to go with um, so that I could get a little bit more strength out of my tools but have um, much closer spacing. So if, I'm do, if I am working on smaller parts, I can um, fixture those accordingly. All right, let's go through some of the um, tools and consumables that we're gonna use for this project. Um, obviously the first and most important is gonna be drill bits. So I have two main kind of drill bits here. I think this is typically what um, the two main kinds that you could use for a job like this. The first is your jobber style drill bit, um, and this is what most people think of when they think of a drill bit. The other option is an annular cutter, and as you can see, um, these things will cut a slug into the material, um, and I have two main kinds. This one here is a high-speed steel, and as you can see, this one has some shiny teeth on it, and this has carbide tips. So. The two main kinds here, the main downfall with the annular cutter is that, as you can imagine, since it's cutting a slug into it, once it hits the shank, that's as deep as it can cut. So these right here are a two inch depth of cut, and unfortunately they're not gonna work for my application since I have a three inch thick top. So I'm gonna be going with a jobber style drill bit for this. I'm gonna start with a half inch hole. Um, and then move up to a 4764. And the reason for this is these drill bits don't drill perfect holes. That's why if you want a perfect hole, you're gonna have to use a reaming bit. So 4764 is just a hair under three quarter. So ideally I would do that and then finish with a three quarter inch reamer, but those are very expensive and I think a little bit more precise than I need for an application like this. So I'm either going to finish with a typical three quarter inch drill bit or the three quarter inch annular cutter to just take that final cut off of the edges. Um, the main advantage of a reaming bit is it follows a hole, it doesn't cut a hole, so you're not going to enlarge your hole, it will follow. Um, if your hole is slightly on an angle, it will follow it and make that hole slot a three quarter inch hole. 
Um, lastly, I have a one inch by 82 degree countersink bit, and this is gonna help just take that um, lip off of the cut so that I have a nice clean edge. Um, the degree really does not matter a ton. You just wanna put a, a small chamfer on it. Lastly, I have a three quarter inch end mill, and all I'm gonna use this for is it has a perfect three quarter inch shank, so I can use this to check my final hole and see how much slop is in there. Ideally, this will be a very tight fit, but like I said before, it's gonna be a trial and error process. Next up, we have the parts that are going to turn the drill bits. So I have two main style of mag drills here. Um, I'm gonna primarily use this Milwaukee because as you see it has a, a typical Jacob style chuck So I'll be able to just slide my drill bits into there and tighten them up. This Hogan here is a um, Designed for an annular cutter. So it has a three-quarter inch chuck that will Accept these annular cutters and then two set screws that will tighten down onto the flat spots that are on the annular cutter. Lastly, and equally important, we have our fluids and coolants and oils. Um, so I have a, three different options to test out and see what works best. To start, we have CRC cutting oil. Um, this is just a aerosol lubricant. Next, we have Tap Magic, which is a cutting fluid, um, and there's just a thick oil that will help lubricate that cut. And lastly, we have Metalworking Fluids um, Coolant. So this is just a water-soluble concentrate that I mixed up with 80% water, 20% concentrate. Um, and this is more water-based, so it won't smoke quite as much as these ones. So one of the most important parts about this job is making sure that your holes are consistently spaced. One of the easiest ways to do that is to create a fixture so that each hole is laid out the exact same as the hole before it. The most common way I've seen is you would take your time to lay out your first couple holes, and then your fixture would mount into those and locate your next set of holes. and then you locate your fixture to those holes and locate your next set of holes and so on and so forth. Um, in my application, as you can see, my table has these key slots and all they are is a half inch wide slot that's been milled into this table, leaving me with dozens of squares that are perfectly sized. So I'm gonna use those slots as my location for each set of holes. Um, obviously this leaves me with all these squares, so we're gonna have just a square that's drilled with X amount of holes repeated throughout the table. Um, I have the table marked with some duct tape and what that duct tape means is that's where one of those um, cross members is running under the table so we're going to avoid those squares. So the sandpaper you see sitting on here, those squares are what is free and clear underneath and where we're going to drill our holes. My fixture, which I had helped machining, um, is a inch and a quarter thick piece of aluminum and what it has to locate it is three quarter inch dowel pins. So those are perfectly placed to locate this block onto a square. So you'd, you'd set those dowel pins into the grooves, square it up to one of the plates, um, and then each of these half inch holes would be centered on that square itself. Um, and then as far as transferring that location onto the table, we have a half inch transfer punch and with this thick aluminum, this transfer punch is very tight in there. So all we're gonna do is stick it in there, whack with a hammer, and it will leave an indent on the table. So let's get this fixture positioned into the first square and these holes transferred onto the table, and we'll see what it's gonna look like before we start drilling. All right, so we're gonna start with this square here. As you can see, there's a cross member here, and there's a cross member here. So this one is free. If I can get all of these inner squares drilled, I will be drilling the edge ones. I'm just not starting with those because they're only gonna get 10 holes instead of 15. So I'm gonna start with the full squares. So I'm gonna start by just making sure my surfaces are clean so they sit um, flat without rocking. That will just make it that much more consistent. And make sure all this is cleaned off really well. With that done, we're gonna scooch this until it sits into those grooves, just like that. You can see we have a little bit of slot, so we're gonna butt it up all the way up into the corner so it doesn't move. And these mag drills are very heavy, so I'm gonna be using this mag drill as my weight to hold this plate down so that it doesn't move. All right. 
Feels very sturdy there. So let's grab our transfer punch and start punching holes. So a good quality transfer punch is very important. And all this is, is a perfect shank with a small point on the end so it will follow the holes in our fixture. Um, so, slips in there very tight. And I'm just gonna give it a little whack and it will leave that indent onto the workpiece. All right, and what we're left with is 15 small indents. What I have set up here is the transfer punch itself. So that's gonna help us locate the point directly in that indent we made. Um, and then we will lock the magnet down, switch out to the half inch drill bit and begin drilling that way. All right, with it in the correct spot, the magnet locked down, this thing is not moving. So I can go ahead and bring this all the way up, remove this center punch, and switch it out for the half inch drill bit. I have my three coolants and oils. Slide this drill bit in there. All right, so we have made it all the way through with the half inch bit. All right, here's our 4764 into the chuck. All right, there is our 4764 hole. All right, give it some coolant. Yeah, that is a perfect hole. And our last step is using this countersink bit. All right, and I'm very happy with that. We are now going to move to the next hole, and next up I will be trying the CRC cutting fluid. All right, so our half inch hole is through. Um, I don't think I like the CRC quite as much as the coolant. Uh, it seems to be a lot more aerated, so it stays more towards the surface and evaporates a lot faster. Um, I will continue using it for the rest of this hole, so for the 4764 and the three quarter, um, but I do not think I will use it much after that. So with that hole drilled, 
we are now going to switch to um, back to our 4764s. Tighten that in the chuck. All right, so that was the 47 64th hole. So next up, we are going to go to our three quarter inch drill bit. Tighten that in and um, continue cutting with the CRC fluid. All right, so there is our three quarter inch hole. So I'm switching back to the reading bit. And just like that, we have our second hole. All right, we are all set up to start drilling. Um, just punch the tap magic, so I'm just gonna put a dab in our hole, like that, and let's get to it. All right, so that is the first half inch pilot hole. Um, I think the tap magic worked a little bit better, but I still don't know if I was very happy with it simply because it's a little bit harder to apply. All right, we are now mounted up with the three quarter inch drill bit. And we are going to start cutting. All right, and there we have another three quarter inch hole. All right, we have three holes drilled, three different kinds of coolant and lubricant. I do prefer the coolant, and I think I'm gonna continue the job strictly with this. Welcome back guys. It is now day two. Um, I got 30 holes drilled yesterday. Um, so that's about an eighth of the minimum amount of holes I wanna do. Getting back into it today, I just picked up this drill bit sharpener because um, I've noticed the drill bits, they're, they're actually lasting longer than I thought they were going to, but 
the more I use them, the harder I'm having to push down. So um, I picked this little sharpener up. It is the Drill Doctor 750X. Um, it can handle 3 32 second up until 3 quarter of an inch drill bits. So I'm just gonna touch up the point and the cutting edge on a couple of my bits and then we'll get back into it. So as you guys can see, we have nice new cutting edges on these drill bits. hole of my 240 hole pattern to start. I think it is actually starting to go pretty quick. I got it down to just under five minutes a hole um, if the drill bit's sharp and everything goes smoothly. Um, so let's knock this guy out. I think I'm, I am going to do a few more in the middle just to cover some empty space. But um, yeah, this is exciting. Let's get it drilled. All right guys, and here we are, 240 holes. Um, in this area around here, the hole started to get to about three and a quarter of an inch, which is very deep. Um, and it made it pretty difficult because it started to max the flute depth that I had on my drill bits. So when I get to the bottom of the hole, it wouldn't be able to remove the chip. So I'm gonna be using this reamer, um, if you can see that there. And this is gonna help us get a perfect hole all the way through. We'll take a look at how the holes are right now. So this tool right here is the main reason why I'm gonna ream them. Um, and if you'll see, if you go to this hole, it gets started, it's really tight, um, and you know it'll really wedge itself in there. Like if I try to force that through, I have a really hard time getting it out. And it doesn't go that deep. So what we're gonna do is I have some, uh, I put the tap magic in one of these little oil squirters and all I'm gonna do is give that some lube. And then 
pull it out. I'm gonna get some more oil on there. And that's all it needs. And if you watch this, drops right in. Super easy. I'm gonna go do all of these holes with the hand drill and then all that's left is countersinking it and taking that um, burr off the top edge so it's just a little bit easier to get tools in. Here's the final product. Said and done, I have 684 holes drilled into the table and I've had the opportunity to use it now for the last few months on various projects and jobs and it's been super useful and overall I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, you can see I also added three drilled and tapped holes in the corner here for my vise, which has been super nice. So overall, I'm really happy with the outcome. All right, some of you guys might be wondering how much weight I removed from this table from drilling all these holes. So that's what we're gonna figure out right now. I've got a scale here, and then three five gallon buckets full of shavings. The first one, weighing at 75 pounds. Second one, Weighing in at 70 pounds. And the third one is only about half full. Weighing in at 40 pounds. So we have 185 pounds of shavings here that we drilled out of this table. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the video.